Percus Maximus is another great mod that overhauls all the skill trees in Skyrim. The changes done to the Conjuration tree make for very good necromancy. Necromancy is provided by investing points into the Conjuration tree, and it's mostly focused around permanent skeleton minions that you can craft using bones, flesh, and other components from corpses. Reanimation is also vastly improved by this mod, and your reanimated minions are permanent now. Reanimated minions no longer crumble into a pile of dust when destroyed. Instead, the body remains there so that you can reuse it. We'll begin by looking at the first perk in the Conjuration Tree. This is the Novice Conjuration perk. It will grant you a random beginner spell. If you're lucky, it's going to give you the Reanimate Animal spell. At a low level, you're not going to be able to go and kill a Sabertooth or a bear, so you might have to settle for a wolf or a mud crab. You may at first glance think that your reanimated mud crab would be a rather useless minion, but you'd be mistaken. Go and find one of those king mud crabs, the ones with the pointy head. But be careful because they're likely to one-shot you with their pincers. So I'd recommend killing them from far away using the fire spell or a bow or something like that. Once you reanimate your king crab, he's going to destroy all your enemies. He's an unstoppable tanky badass. And he's just what you need to kill a bunch of bandits and take their bones for your first skeletal minion. Look at him go. The next perk you'll want in the Conjuration Tree is the Harvest perk. It allows you to take bones, hearts, flesh, and a few more ingredients from corpses. For basic skeletons, all you need is the bones and a petty soul gem. But for more advanced creations later on, you'll require hearts and flesh. In the meantime, you can sell them or use them in alchemy, or you can store them away for later use. To loot components from a corpse, you have to open it while sneaking. Once your king crab has killed enough bandits for you and you've been able to loot a complete set of bones, you can craft your first skeleton using the summon skeleton spell. You'll also need a petty soul gem for each one of your skeletons. Luckily these aren't too hard to come by, but it can be difficult at lower levels. Your skeleton will last forever until destroyed in combat. At the beginning all he can do is fight for you, but later on he's going to be able to carry stuff for you too. There's no limit to how many skeletons you can have, but losing them at low levels can be painful because you can't retrieve the components again. So if your skeleton dies, you're going to lose those bones and the petty soul gem, which can kind of hurt. With a perk later on, you'll be able to salvage the dead minions and bring them back, but right now you'll just have to soak it up and lose the precious soul gem. Your skeletons will serve you well, destroying most enemies of ease. They don't regenerate health though, so they're certainly consumables. They're not capable of receiving complicated commands like a follower is. Instead, they're always going to be following you. They can't be set to be passive or to wait or anything like that. You can't shove them out of the way either, so they can become a handful in enclosed spaces. The next perk you're likely to get is the Tongues of Old perk. This is the perk that allows you to offload items into your minions. They can be used in this way just to carry stuff, or you can swap their equipment out for better stuff so they deal more damage. They'll use whatever items you put into them. There doesn't seem to be a limit to what they can carry, but if they're killed you'll have to remember to take the items back from their corpse. You have to be careful with what items you give them, because sometimes the corpse will be blown into a strange location. For example, if a giant swings his hammer or whatever down onto your skeleton and its bones get blown to the far corners of the earth, you're going to have a hard time finding that skeleton again and getting the items back off it. Similar thing if a fireball hits it and it gets blown into the river and falls down to the bottom, it can be very hard to find those little pieces because the skeleton tends to explode and the hand flies off and the legs go in a different direction and the head goes in yet another direction. So it's just something to keep in mind. I wouldn't give them anything that's too valuable. 
But it's great for lugging around sets of iron armor and whatever else you want to sell or melt down. With regards to the equipment that the skeletons spawn with, I haven't found any need to swap out their equipment. At low levels, the basic um, ancient Nordic weaponry that they use is perfectly fine. And at high levels, they get the Hone versions instead. Next, we come to the Bone Mastery perk. Investing points into this lets you make different kinds of skeletons. With two points invested, you get a skeleton archer. And with three points invested, you get a skeletal mage. You can choose what you want when you're summoning the skeleton. The skeleton archers are really nice. They hang back and turn enemies into pincushions for you. They work very well in combination with tanky reanimated animals like bears or saber cats, and they really shine in the more open spaces like fighting in fields or even assaulting forts and cities because they can pick off the defenders off the battlements for you. I've always got a few skeleton archers in my compositions. The only situation where they don't do so well, of course, is in enclosed spaces. They perish quickly in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Friendly fire does occur, but fortunately does not cause infighting. Skeleton mages are extremely good, and rather surprisingly they're probably your best minions for raiding dungeons with, because a few of them pack a very good punch. They're capable of summoning their own Atronarchs to assist in combat. At lower levels they just throw fire bolts and frost bolts, stuff like that, but when your conjuration level is high enough they'll begin to use more advanced spells. They'll start summoning frost Atronarchs, fire Atronarchs, and they'll begin using more powerful destruction magic like fireballs and uh, that sort of big blue ball of ice. I don't know what it's called. I don't use destruction magic, but whatever it is, they're doing a good job. Because of their summons, you can take a trio of mages down into a dungeon. And because there's only three of them, they're not going to be blocking you and obstructing your path and stuff. But when the fighting begins, they can summon in those extra Atronarchs and it kind of doubles your, your army size. That's the reason I think they work really well for dungeons and enclosed spaces. They also do great in the open field. They're just great all round. The next perk we need to take a look at is the Bone Conservation perk. It's one of the most important perks because it allows you to get all the components back from a dead skeleton. So when your skeletons are dead and they're lying on the floor, you no longer lose all those components. Instead you can walk up to the corpse activate it, and then take those components back. You can also destroy existing minions so they don't have to be dead. This way if you need a new composition, like you don't want those archers anymore and you want mages instead, you can just unravel those skeletons, get the components, and turn them into the different type of skeleton that you need. Lord of Bones is the next most useful perk. It allows you to create advanced forms of the base three types of skeletons the warrior, the archer, and the mage. These advanced forms are really awesome, and they stand quite high. They must be at least 2.5 meters tall. The only sad thing about them is that you can only have one of them at a time. To craft them, you're going to need your standard set of skeleton bones, you're going to need the petty soul gem, and you're also going to require a unique component. The unique component is different per kind of advanced skeleton you want to make. The advanced skeleton warrior requires the human heart, the skeleton archer requires a beast heart, and the skeleton mage requires an elven heart. Human hearts are of course retrieved from human bodies, that means Nords, Imperials, Red Guards, and Bretons. You get elven hearts from killing orcs and elves, any kind of mare really. Beast hearts are found on the corpses of Argonians and Khajiits. On top of these ingredients, you also require existing basic skeletons. I didn't test it too much, but from what I could tell, I needed at least four basic skeletons in order to summon an advanced skeleton. The more of these basic skeletons you have, the better it is, because each skeleton sacrificed to make the greater skeleton will increase the health, magicka, and stamina of that minion by 100. This is a pretty substantial buff. So what I typically do 
is I make as many basic skeletons as I can, then I make my advanced skeleton, then I retrieve all the components back from all the dead basic skeletons that are lying around everywhere, and then I rebuild all those basic skeletons. And this way you can have a really powerful greater undead, backed by all the basic skeleton minions. Each one of these advanced minions is really good. My personal favorite is the warrior skeleton. That's because I love to see my minions in the thick of it, smashing the enemies of big clubs and stuff, and the advanced skeleton warrior delivers in this. He's got kind of storm blue bones, or stormy purple colored bones. He's very, very tanky, and he hits like a truck. He also seems to be wearing ancient Nordic armor, the kind of armor that Draugr wear. The advanced skeleton archer is a bit like a walking ballista. He's armed with all kinds of advanced arrows. If you check his inventory, he's got Daedric arrows in there and other kinds of very good arrows like Ebony or whatever else. Appearance-wise, he seems to be interestingly tattooed. Honestly, I think he looks pretty cool. The advanced skeleton mage is also pretty cool. Appearance wise he seems to be like the upper half of a skeleton floating on a storm cloud. Combat wise he's pretty decent. He seems to use a lot of um, frost magic. I haven't used him too extensively because the other two seem to be better than this guy. Finally at the very end of the tree we have the focus necromage perk. It allows you to temporarily summon a skeleton dragon. The summoning consumes three dragon scales and three dragon bones. This is pretty expensive for a summon that only lasts a few minutes. The dragon also suffers from typical Skyrim dragon AI. Instead of fighting or moving or doing anything, he seems to flop around like a fish on land. Not the most useful minion in my opinion. When he does finally decide to stop flopping around and mucking about and actually do some honest fighting, he's not too terrible. He's got like the frost breath attack that's pretty damaging. But all in all, you're better off skipping this perk I'd say and just using your skeleton minions and your reanimated animals. Much better minions than this guy. Somewhere along the way in this tree, I'm not sure which perk exactly grants it, but one of the perks grants you the ability to recall all your skeleton minions to your current location. This is useful because sometimes your minions get stuck, like they can't navigate their way across some obstacles, or they disappear, or whatever. You just need to bring them all to your location right now. Whenever you use this ability, your skeleton minions kind of spawn to your position and push you out of the way. If you do this in an enclosed space, as I found out in the dungeon when I used it, you can actually get some strange effects. When I used it in this Aelia Druin, I was actually forced through the floor by my minions, and I fell out of the level into the void. And I kept falling as I reached a certain point where I was teleported back to the beginning of the dungeon. So it's not a game-breaking bug or anything. Nothing was corrupted afterwards. I continued to play the game normally and nothing went wrong. But this goes to show that you can't use this ability in an enclosed space. But outside it's very useful. I'm not sure why, but sometimes after using this I've seen my skeletons kneeling on their knees, obviously damaged somehow by using the spell. I think they might fall in the air or something and when they contact the ground they can get damaged. So far we've only been talking about the skeleton crafting side of the necromancy tree. But further back down, there's a few perks for reanimation. The first of these perks is the Gravebound perk. It allows you to reanimate stronger bodies, which is nice if you're reanimating a lot of humanoids. The Recurring Nightmare perk allows you to store the form of a corpse and then apply it to any dead body. What this means is, is if you find a really strong warrior or a mage or whatever, and you kill it, you can store this kind of humanoid. Then if you find any old body, you can apply this to that body and then resurrect that saved humanoid again. It's a nice ability for those of us who really love the reanimation side of things. 
because it means you can turn any old crappy corpse into a really good zombie. Down the center of the Conjuration Tree we've got a few perks that benefit both Necromancers and Daedric Hunters. The first perk we already took, that was the first node of the Conjuration Tree. The next one is the Studies Apprentice Conjuration perk. It increases the duration of Daedra summons and improves bound weapons. It's not of direct use to us as a Necromancer because our summons are permanent. But if you're using bound weaponry a lot, it's going to be good for you. You also need it as a prerequisite to the next perks further down. The Studies Adept Conjuration perk is quite a nice one. Whenever your minions kill things, you're going to recover some magicka. There's not much, but every little bit helps. Ancient Rites is the next useful perk. It increases your Daedra and Reanimation minion limit from 1 to 2. So you can have two Atronarchs or two Big King Mug Crabs instead of just one. I'm honestly not too sure what this next perk, Studies Expert Conjuration, is meant to do because the text is cut off. So I looked it up in the Perkus Maximus section of the mod wiki, and you have to be careful with the information here because it seems to be out of date, but it says that this perk provides benefits as your life force decreases. When your health is below 50%, your summon limit will increase by one, and bound weapons can be summoned for free. I don't think this is going to be of much use to a necromancer, unless you intend to be fighting a lot on the front lines. Studies Master Conjuration perk gives you a bonus when a summoned minion is around, but this doesn't include your skeletons. It has to be something like an Atronarch or a Daedra. When the minion is active, you take 10% less damage from spells and weapons. Not too bad, but unless you're going to be using a lot of Daedra, you're unlikely to benefit much from this. Off to the side here, you also have the Advanced Summoning perk which increases the range of summoning spells by 150%. This is nice for putting Atronarchs up on the walls of castles or whatever, but also for other situations. Just as a side note, not related to necromancy, this mod has a few other really cool things that I'll just very briefly mention here. The other side of the conjuration tree for summoners is also really cool. The final perk in this tree lets you open the gate to oblivion, from which Daedra pour out to fight for you. In the smithing tree, there's also perks that allow you to build um, Dweemer machines, like Dweemer spiders and stuff like that. So these could be extra minions for you. Really cool. The only thing left now is to give this mod a score. Has it got plentiful minions? It does. There's no limit to the amount of skeletons you can make. The only limit is your sanity, as they block you in enclosed areas. You can have a huge army of skeletons, limited only by your resources, along with two reanimated humanoids or animals, Daedra or Bone Dragons. Has it got useful minions? It most definitely has useful minions. The minion diversity is good. You've got your frontline warrior skeletons, your archer skeletons, and your mage skeletons. You can supplement these with a giant advanced skeleton of each category, as well as animals like bears, saber-toothed tigers, mud crabs, etc. And it all combines to create a really well-rounded army. There doesn't seem to be an issue with aggro due to friendly fire, which is fantastic. You don't have to worry about your minions going apeshit on each other. The minions also have permanent death, which is really nice, because it means you can be outmatched and defeated. Patience and preparation is rewarded. So is a nice composition of skeletons for the task at hand. For open areas, storming castles and besieging cities, I like a lot of archers because the open space allows them to work really well. In enclosed spaces, it's better to have fewer minions, like a trio of mages, and their summoned atronarchs, or a single advanced minion. It's also especially useful that minions can carry things for you. You'll never have to leave all that loot behind again. Are the minions permanent? Yep, all of the minions except for the bone dragon are permanent. You'll never have to be annoyed by your skeletons and reanimations timing out. They're going to persist until destroyed. Is the caster weak and squishy? Being Skyrim, you can certainly choose to be a very squishy caster, investing solely into the conjuration tree and investing level up points into magicka makes you exceedingly squishy, which is great. Focus Maximus also performs really well in the Craftable Minions bonus category, 
I think they've done a really great job of meaning crafting in this mod. Not only is a set of bones required, but also a soul gem. And for the advanced minions, the crafting process is even more involved. You need flesh components and also the sacrifice of existing minions to create them. So, all in all, I give this mod a solid 9 out of 10. It's a very satisfying necromancy experience. Nothing's perfect though. I've got a few criticisms of the mod. Reviving dead minions can be a tedious process, especially when your entire army can die due to things like traps or have their bones scrambled everywhere. To revive the minion you have to disassemble it, which means all the components will return to your inventory and weigh you down. In Mysterious Bear's Epic Necromancy mod for Oblivion, you had the ability to repair a dead minion, which was very convenient because you wouldn't have to be weighed down with the dead bones and the task of having to resummon it. Instead, you'd dispense some additional components to repair the dead minion. I'd also like to see more undead than just skeletons being able to be summoned. For example, it'd be really cool to get some Drogor or some zombies and wraiths. I suppose your animated humans kind of count as zombies, but I'm thinking more along the lines of zombies from Oblivion. I'd also like to see the ability to command minions, although this isn't critical. It'd just be nice to have. So, great mod comes highly recommended from me.